Welcome to Loki Season 1, Episode 4, Thoughts. And as usual, there are spoilers in this video for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, especially videos made by me, Rockstar, Streamlight, Nerdist, CBR, Screen Crush, Black Nerd Comedy, and IGN. So, the first two episodes have Loki in one historic event each. The third episode had Sylvie accessing Commander C-20's long lost memories, and this one has child Sylvie, so each episode does have something that... Yeah, some, something unusual, let's go with. So, if this is the first of these videos by me that you watch, then just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie, although I don't make excuses for Iron Man 2. And I love every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus MCU shows. Now, I'm not 100% settled on whether or not I love this episode yet. I will let you know at the end of this video. So, the episode is called The Nexus Event. And the Nexus Event, that refers to the, the you know, apparently there was a Nexus Event when Loki and Sylvie shared a tender moment. On Lamentus, Lamentus One. It's really cool seeing Charles Sylvie and you know the other Easter egg people have already covered all the all the references that are there. So I'm just gonna, but yeah, you know, seeing the TVA arrest this child. Now we really get the fascist. You know, the, the fascist overtones are just you know completely overwhelming at this point. And, and little Sylvie looks so scared looking at the machine that will kill her if she's a robot and doesn't know it or lies about it. And as others have pointed out, if you look at the floor, there are scorch marks there. So, yeah, apparently some people did go through the machine and were incinerated. Yeah, it's really no wonder that Sylvie is so jaded. And child Sylvie bit the cop on the hand and stomped on her foot to get away. And we see that Renslayer was the agent that lost Sylvie when she was a child. And, yes, you know, I, I don't only, in, in these videos, I'm not, I don't only go into things in chronological order. So I will bring up, others have pointed out, maybe the reason the machine kills you if you're a robot, the, the, is, is that the, you know, like robots, you know, other robots might be able to see, realize that the the timekeepers are actually robots. And, and one of them joked that, oh, you know, I guess I'm a robot racist. The way I see it, a robot might have like, you know, might have the, some something in their, their well, not brain, uh, CPU that, that could scan. And if they can scan, like, if they can scan through walls, and they like look at the the you know yeah look at the right angle and scan through the balls they could be like those aren't lizards at all they're robots and that would be a problem for you know I, it seems to me certainly Renslayer knows about the the you know them, them being androids but we yeah we don't we don't know if she's like in charge but she definitely does she wasn't even remotely surprised that these are, you know, this, this, this is something you would expect to just shatter her, you know. Now, now let me think. When the when the decapitation happened, she was on the ground, but afterwards, you know, she got up and she just she prunes Loki, and she, you know, and when Sylvie wins their fight, then she says, "Go ahead, kill me." She doesn't seem like someone who just had their entire belief system just shattered. You know, this is this is like the 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 people of Oz finding out that the wizard is just a guy. This is this is big stuff, and she really no, she knew. She one hundred percent knew. Now, let's see. And I, I like that this the first time in the episode that we see the three timekeepers, 
silhouette shot is, I feel like, is the wrong term, but I think you know what I mean. We, we don't get a really good look at them yet. And I, if I want to, if I, to be 100% honest, the CGI wasn't 100% convincing, but, you know, I, I do like the look. I think they found a way to make, I mean, they're space lizards. They're, they're giant space lizards. They're like, I, I feel like they're, they're about two Lokis tall each. You know, this is not easy to make make it look good, make it look convincing. And it really, the, the episode really has a problem if when we see the timekeepers, we're snickering. So I, I feel like they did a good job. And, and the, the I, th I think one of the other Easter egg people said that the mustache one looked like the Lorax. And yeah, kind of. That's, yeah. Now, I wanted to... But, but yeah, you know, Renslayer, possibly Kang, and I could imagine that she and, and Kang are working together. I've also heard a theory that maybe uh, one of the Lokis is behind this, not one of the ones we've seen, but a secret Loki, and that secret Loki doesn't want any other Lokis running around. That could also very well be now. But yeah, so back to in chronological order. So early in the episode, we have another great scene between Mobius and Renslayer. These are compelling characters with an interesting dynamic, and it easily could have just been, like, he's, he's like, an investigator, a cop type, and she's a judge. The, the, on paper, they should be dry and boring. And I really appreciate that they're not. And Renslayer tells the audience in Mobius that Commander C-20 is now dead. I can't help but wonder if she's lying, and, you know, yeah. Certainly, the if if they did kill her, it's because they could no longer control her. They couldn't mind wipe her again, and we do see that later in the episode. We see the uh, what's it called Inter uh, interrogation debriefing footage, and she she just will not. She's like, no, I I know, I remember now. And we have that little brief bit where you know they can they kind of need it for for Mobius to see. No, Renslayer was was there in the room. She knows, you know. So they have this thing where she like, like the camera moves slightly. I guess I think she's like trying to turn it off or something. And then like the camera, she turns the camera a little bit, and then she looks directly into the camera. <laughs> yeah, and and she didn't get around to trimming off those. I, I mean, to be fair, it was her. Thing, it was her gadget. She didn't expect anyone else to get a hold of that gadget, but it's, it's it, f fingerprints. Like I'm, I, I feel like I have better security on my on my smartphone than they do on there. But then we need the store to move along. So, and and to be fair, they do have a bunch of retro technology. So yeah. In addition to the futuristic technology. And we see the trailer shot of Loki and Sylvie on the planet. I like that, you know, Sylvie says, everywhere and every when I went. That's a that's a great, I love that they just slide it by. They don't make a big deal out of, because that's, you know, she's been time traveling for her entire life. You know, if I had to guess, at least 20 years. So to her, you know, everywhere, every when. That's, you know. And Sylvie asks, do you think what makes a Loki a Loki is that we're destined to lose? Lamentis does look incredible as it's being destroyed. And Sylvie and Loki are arrested and separated. And, you know, Mobius gives Loki one chance to, you know, okay, what is it that you want to tell me? The TVA is lying to you, and sadly he doesn't believe, but you can understand why. And Loki goes through a portals of spirits with him. Very cool to see her again. And I like, you know, he just, he's like a bad memory person. How quaint. I don't know if Sif actress Jamie Alexander had a ton of fun beating up Tom Hiddleston or got really annoyed with how little characterization she gets here. It's it's really, I mean, that is something they, they nailed about 
the MCU gives Sif nothing to do. It's it's wild. Like, okay, you know, I haven't watched Agents of Shield yet. I hear she's in like two episodes of that. Maybe there she finally got because it like we have two solo movies and now this show, and she just but but apparently she's gonna show up in Thor four. <laughs> Here's hoping she'll finally get something new because apparently, like Loki posing as Odin banished or exiled Sif before the events of Thor, you know, b between Thor 2 and Thor 3, and because of that she is still alive somewhere. Yeah. And Loki thinks he got through to Sif when she puts her hands on his shoulders, but it's just a meme in the groin again. And... Yeah, we're showing, you know, the, the time spike was caused by the two Lokis being in love with each other and sharing a tender moment. You know, we brought in three Titans, vampires. This, this is, let's see, I, I, this is like the second, the second reference to vampires existing in the MCU. Blade's coming up, and I guess maybe Mobius is talking about Morbius. They're only one letter apart in spelling, so... And we see that Loki has grown more of a conscience while well, in the bad memory of prison, and he's sitting on the ground because it hurts to stand after all those nut shots. You are alone, and you always will be. I really appreciate that they did not ruin that moment with another nut shot. I'm not saying the other ones were necessarily excessive, but here it definitely would have been. And honestly, thinking more about it, I think it would have been better if it was only ever emotional pain, not physical pain that he felt in the bad memory prison, like, maybe especially if he himself brought up, like, because we know that, you know, Sif is strong, and she's not usually averse to violence, so if the first time she walked up, if he was like, no, 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 don't, don't hit me, and she, and, and it was always only, like, verbal abuse, emotional abuse. Now... And Mobius is back playing hardball, and it does make sense. I really appreciate that the he clearly does really feel betrayed by Loki. You know, when Loki ran through that open time door at the end of episode two, he really betrayed Mobius' trust, and Mobius was like, you know, vouching for him and saying, "Look, I I know, yeah, he's a Loki, but." I think he can be useful, and, yeah. Of course it was me pulling the strings all along. Clever. And Mobius claimed that Sylvie is dead. The moment that he said that, I knew that there's no way that's true, but, yeah, Mobius, Mobius is poking at Loki. One of the Moby Loki pokes. And... Yeah, and, and Loki tells him, you're all variants, they kidnap you, erase your memories. And like, you know, when, when Hunter B-15 goes into Sylvie's room, she has the weapon drawn from right away. Like, Sylvie's that dangerous. I mean, they, they have the, the uh, what's it called? Neck band, time twisted thing on her neck already. And, and, you know, the, I also like, you know, Hunter B-15, when, 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 yeah, when Hunter B-15 has Sylvie, or, yeah, when Hunter B-15 takes her and Sylvie to the, the, I forget when it was, but it was this apocalyptic event, you know, the, the rocks card, it was episode two, I'm almost certain. And, you know, Sylvie looks around, she's like, you want a fair fight? Okay. Mobius, are you okay? This is paperwork. You usually get excited about paperwork. And Renslayer is surprised. Mobius asks so many questions. And I like that, you know, she tests him with, if you could go anywhere, where would you go? And, you know, he's like, I don't know. I don't know. Because obviously, if he was like, oh, I would jet skis, I would go to jet skis. 
directly. You know, she yeah, she'd be like, yeah, do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars pruned. Now, let's see. Yeah, and at this point in in watching the episode, I noted we didn't actually see the time co time keepers move or say anything, so I can't help but wonder if there's something that we don't know about them. I really appreciate how much characterization they give to Renslayer and Hunter B15. They could easily be one note. When you know, when I just saw the trailers and and you see Judge Renslayer sitting there. Like the the very early trailers before Renslayer got any of the other scenes, and you just saw her as a judge sitting there. I kind of was fearing that we were gonna get just completely bland, straightforward. I don't know. I guess I forgot it was MC, it was the MCU for a little bit. Usually the the characters are compelling. Now let's see the the um, yeah and and Hunter B fifteen like the first episode I. Yeah, I kind of just thought she was going to be a completely straightforward cop. Let's see. Right, and I wanted to note... Near the end of the episode, there are several fights in the room of the timekeepers. And one of these fights is between Sylvie and Renslayer, and it ends with Renslayer on the ground, but then like a minute later or something, she's right behind Loki and pruning him. I just feel like Sylvie doesn't seem to be the kind of person who would just leave. She would probably finish off, you know, Renslayer, and she certainly wouldn't lower her guard like that around her. And it again, it's it's because the they need the story to move along. Anyway. That was a good speech. I know I should have made Rams. Was that so hard to look man? Yeah, that's not a very good impersonation of Owen Wilson. And yeah, we see Mobius swap, you know, Rens his is is it just called a tempad? with Renslayers, and it's, you know, he's like, so where do you want to put this? Please pick this up and turn your back to me for at least a second or two so that I can... When you were in my head, I saw something. What did you do to me? And first, she doesn't want to believe what somebody tells her. I mean, it's not uncommon to use rain to make you seem more sad, but this is the first time I've seen someone travel through time to find rain to make a scene sad. And, you know, these three people point out it's definitely a reference to the tears and rain scene from Blade Runner. Excellent acting from D15. We don't see what she reacts to, just her reaction. And it's like, you know, I mean, it's one thing, like, let's hypothetically say that with her, it was like with Commander C20. We see the the memory, and then she has that to react to. But no, here she literally just... Yeah, that's very, very good acting. And Mobius watches the interrogation of Hunter C20. We see the Hunter did in fact remember her past, and Slayer doesn't want her to. So Mobius goes back to Mogi, so I just have to trust the word of two Lokis. How about the word of a friend? And Renslayer confronts Mobius. At first she pretends it was accidental, but clearly she knows better, so he confronts her about the TVA, lying about who they are, and he gets pruned seemingly. Really did not see that coming, and I really do hope that he's in, like, he's only been in three episodes. You know, this is the fourth episode. He wasn't in episode three at all. Or did he appear very briefly? Certainly he wasn't in very much of it, at the very, very least. And are the last two episodes really not going to have him, but then the, the post credit scene, but is it only Lokis who don't die, but have a chance to survive? I don't know. What was my nexus event? Why did you bring me in? I don't remember. Well, I have to know that you're a lying liar, and that's a lie. 100%. I, I do not believe her. 
that she doesn't remember the I, I know that she looked like she was maybe trying to remember the way I see it she was thinking of should I tell her she, she was she was figuring what would be the most hurtful thing to tell her because she feels like it, it was basically a personal insult you know it was she she it was her job to bring her in and she yeah that's the word you know she lost her and she's been looking for her for all that time. Very cool to see the timekeeper speaking. And I like the, you know, let's see, was it both Sylvie and Loki trying to run? And, you know, Renslayer is like, I, I guess you forgot about the neck bands, huh? And she presses the thing and they start looping. But then they break free from the loop and, you know, be. P15 has turned off the neck bands really really like and and she says some have we heard her say this before she says something like for all of time always or something like that I I mean is that like the the TVA slogan maybe and she's like throwing it back in Renslayer's face Another very cool fight, and Sylvie decapitates the timekeeper and see it's a robot. So those theories about the timekeepers not being, you know, the real timekeepers as they're claimed to be are true. I think Loki was about to confess to Sylvie that he loves her, but then Renslayer killed him. I think I mean he was basically also trying to confess his love right before they were arrested in this episode. So there must be some kind of like maybe if it's if two Lokis love each other, maybe it's if Sylvie loves another Loki or loves another person, but certainly cuz cuz we're told that you know she keeps generating nexus events. Do it. No, you're going to tell me everything in the next episode. And the end credits play over a love song from 1960. And, you know, it's, let's see, it's about love during an apocalypse or something like, you know, the, the world is ending. But they love each other, so, you know, so it's fine. And, and that does, you know, yeah, it's, it's a, the, they really don't have a randomly chosen piece of music in the MCU miniseries so far. They're always relevant in some way. I don't think we had Miss Minutes in this entire episode. I really hope we will see in her, her in the last two episodes. I mean, I guess I see... Wait. Her voice wasn't... When they leave the elevator... Because that would be where I... If, if I had to guess, I would figure maybe there. Like how... She was the voice of the, you know, when, when the temp pad was out of battery. And it was her voice going, here, out of juice. And a post credit scene, which... I love these post credit scenes, but I do kind of wish... I, could, could they maybe just, like, as the, as the end credits start, could there just be a, a brief, like, verbal or, or warning in text... You know, verbal notification or... Maybe it says in text, stay through the end credits or something, because, like, I've spoken to several people who missed some of the ones in WandaVision, you know, and, and I heard of at least one who missed one of the ones, was there more than one? In, in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the Cap Captain America and the Winter Soldier, so, yeah, anyway. But yeah, Loki wakes up still alive, and he's like, is this hell? Am I dead? Not yet. But you will be unless you come with us. It's a quartet of Lokis. Black Hammer Loki, Kid Loki, Lizard Loki, or Lizarchy if you're nasty, and Old Man Loki. I guess that means there's a chance that Mobius will re reappear, and Hunter B B-15 was also pruned. But yeah, you know, the, the theory goes that the Lokis are hiding from the, the evil Loki, the main, yeah, Loki, who's who we haven't seen yet, and who's getting rid of Lokis that, yeah, anyway, and, you know, as others have pointed out, 
Richard E. Grant as Old Man Loki. Which is great, because like he 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 plays Old Man Loki. He appeared in Old Man Logan. I mean, I realize that he is by this point himself an old man, but I just I hope they keep finding ways to to have old man have him appear in or as old man something. Anyway, the I mean, it, you know, it's not like he appeared in The Wolverine. He appeared in Old Man Logan, the movie. So anyway, the, the, yeah, Old Man Loki does look exactly like he does in the comic. You know, th this is the, that's the, the outfit that they, you know, they tone down the colors for, I think, both the first Thor movie and certainly in The Avengers. In The Avengers, he, you know, the Loki we know wore a, yeah, you know, the, the green was darker and the yellow was turned into this gold, and so, so, yeah. Now, let's see. And I agree with, you know, I, I heard some people say that this, you know, the, the background behind them, behind the, the portrait of Loki's, is a, it's, it's New York but there was like, you know, some, some kind of, you know, maybe apocalyptic event or something. And, and some people said that, you know, maybe in this version, the nuke exploded. The, you know, Iron Man wasn't able to get it out into, into space in time. And I've heard some say maybe Loki won in this version then. Yeah. Now, so... I was listening to Questing Refuge about episode three, that maybe the TVA are, like, persecuting LGBTQ people. Since the, you know, episode three, the... That's when we find out that, that Loki is a bisexual. And I, I also... I forget if it was Questing Refuge or, or their podcast partner or, or if it was someone else, but I, I feel like I also heard someone say that the episode also said that Sylvie was bi. I have to admit, I'm, I must have missed that. But, but yeah, you know, this ep in, in this episode, Mobius literally talks about, you know, this relationship is sick, you know, you should be ashamed. You know, you, a Loki, should be ashamed of falling for another Loki. So, yeah, you know, that does sound, that, that is the way that, you know, bigots talk about gay people, that it's sick and they should be ashamed. Now, let's see. It, it is perhaps a slightly mixed metaphor because, I mean, this is essentially like if, I see, it's like if, yeah, I'm not sure I am good. Does it does it get into like autogynephilia? Like they're attracted to themselves? As a yeah, I don't know. So apparently the timeline being bombed by Sylvia at the end of episode two was just resolved off screen. Because we saw the timeline again this episode and it didn't have all those branches. And you know, in this episode, they didn't seem stressed at all. They they seemed relieved. It seemed like, okay, now that we have Loki and Sylvie, now that we have Sylvie, everything's fine. You know, there's nothing, you know, so if it wasn't going to lead anything, I really feel like they shouldn't have had that happen in Episode 2. Episode 2 could easily have just ended with Sylvie walking through the time portal, Loki joining her, would still have the emotional impact of Loki betraying Mobius rather than waiting for him, where now... Yeah, it, it just, it feels like it's one of those things where they didn't really have anything, you know, they, they knew that this was, they were going to end an episode here, so they had to do something big, and then it's just resolved off screen, that's, yeah. Because the thing is, now, if Sylvie tries something similar, then it's not going to have the same impact, even if it does this time lead to something, 
it's not going to be as effective because the last time we saw it, it didn't lead to anything. And that was, you know, when I when I did my video talking about episode three, I was talking about, you know, well, I hope that we are gonna see. You know, I I thought that they were that episode three was just to postpone because the bombing of the timeline seems like well, I mean, that's the end of the series right there. That's the that's the multiverse. You can't you can't really how how are you supposed to come back from that? You know, Sylvie has been doing this one. You know, she, she Sylvie has been causing these nexus events one at a time, and now she causes like seven at once and it's just and nothing it just yeah I I I think that was a mistake so that was that was the end of my notes so this is when I for sure see I was going to I'm now going to go into whether you know if this is the first episode that I don't love of these Disney Plus MCU series I was going to give myself this little bit more time that I've now given myself to think through the episode and, and like, talk it through. I feel like some, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I always think of something as I'm talking through something. Even if I spent 10 days leading up to that, writing notes, being careful to figure out, I always, as I'm saying it, I come up with something else. I do think that it is still really well produced, but I do feel like the show is officially running in place now. Like, episode three, yeah, there was character development, and that was great. But they ended episode two promising plot. And now this episode also, like... I'm aware that a lot of people really didn't like the IGN review of this episode. I have to admit, I agree with that review on most of the things they they said in that review. And I'll just very briefly mention, one of the things they mentioned is that this episode has multiple characters catching up to the audience. You know, we see Mobius realizing, yes, the TVA have been lying, and Hunter B-15, yes, the TVA have been, you know, I get that they didn't want to just rush through that, but then they did rush through Mobius dying, which, that seems like it should have been, like, that we, we didn't know, you know, we already knew that if they looked at the evidence, they would realize that the TVA has been lying, they were kidnapped as variants, and mind, you know, brainwashed. And that's the, th I mean, that's the thing. It wasn't, when when that was said in episode three, it also wasn't treated like, it, it didn't give, it didn't get enough of a, you know, like, like comparatively, I would say that this episode does treat the revelation that the timekeepers were just androids. I feel like that got a pretty decent, you know, yeah. That that was given some weight, and, and Loki being pruned was given some weight, but... Yeah, it just and and you know, let's see. The IGN review also points out, you know, the the Loki has already gone through his arc. He's already become, um, you know, much more a, a much better person. He that that happened in episode one. So him being stuck in bad memory prison didn't really, you know, yeah. I feel like if it had been, like, let's let's say that if, I, I think maybe it should have focused, here's, yeah, I think it should have focused on he feels bad, he feels like he ruined everything for Sylvie. So instead of it just being Sif making a return when, you know, I get it, it's, you know, the, the hair cutting is significant both in Norse myth and in Marvel Comics, but it wasn't to this episode. I mean, I know that it leads to the creation of Mjolnir, but that's because I watched Easter egg videos talking about that. In If you only watch the episode, you don't realize that it's significant. 
and it just seems like if if they yeah my my rewrite suggestion would be he goes through a portal and you know in walks Sylvie and she confronts him about how he ruined everything for her and you know maybe she she tells him that she hates him now she doesn't want anything more to do with him now you know now more than ever she's ashamed of being a Loki stuff like that that would be much more compelling and and then the next time he sees Sylvie it could also be like a you know there could be this thing of, of him like feeling like was it the real Sylvie I, I mean okay it probably wasn't the real Sylvie he told me that but still you know and yeah it just I, I really I really don't think they should have ended episode two on the promise of the the timeline being bombed I already mentioned, you know, episode one was a was very much a pilot episode. It introduced characters, it told us some of the rules, and it set up what the show is going to be about. You know, Loki is going to help Mobius track down another Loki. But then they catch up to her by episode two, and, you know, then episode three doesn't really... I don't know, I... I have to wonder if maybe they didn't have enough story to to fill six whole episodes, but there was some kind of what's it called? Uh, yeah, they you know they they had to provide six whole episodes, and because of that, we ended up with you know episode three the bottle episode, the, the filler episode. I like the overall plot. I like the idea of Loki from Avengers 1 developing more of a conscience much sooner than, you know, by... I mean, really, in the, in the movies, it was only really by... Infinity War that he had truly developed a conscience in in Ragnarok he just wants credit for being a hero you know he, he wants adulation for saving people and anyway I like the overall plot of of the show so far Loki develops a conscience turns out there are other versions of Loki other variants of Loki the Time Variance Authority makes sure that you know no one no one goes against the, the timeline. The the everyone who works at the TVA is a variant who has been kidnapped and brainwashed and the you know we, we don't know exactly who is is behind the TVA, but certainly the three timekeepers, that's pure fiction. That's like mythology. That's there so that, you know, because, yeah, if Renslayer just ran things just by herself, then people would be like, well, you're just a person like me. Why do I have to listen to you? But, you know, oh, the, the space lizards who saved the timeline, you know, you hear that, and you hear that they created you, of course you're going to be fairly loyal to them, you know, but... So, so, I like the plot. I wish I could claim that I don't think that plot could have fit into significantly less... I feel like they could have fit certainly three episodes, possibly as little as two episodes, could have had all the plot that we've had so far. And I think the show would be tighter and more, ah, uh, what's the word, smoother for it. As it is, like, in theory, I love this episode. I, I still think that 
it's compelling viewing and you know I there there are revelations in this episode that I'm really excited about but I do think that it's a letdown yeah I I think that is everything that I wanted to say I'm still really really stoked about episode 5 and really excited to see how season 1 ends and yeah I think yeah Oops. so here's hoping episode 5 will yeah be a, be a lot better than this episode and catch you next time